the first thing we want to talk about is acceleration. Acceleration is a change in velocity. Mathematically, this definition then would be that my acceleration is equal to a change in velocity over time. So the rate at which I'm changing my velocity. One of the important things to keep in mind with acceleration is that acceleration, like velocity, like displacement, is a vector. So that means its direction is important. And remember, we indicate direction with a positive and negative. So let's just quickly look at a, a couple different situations here that we could have uh, for both acceleration and velocity and what that means. Uh, for example, if we have a positive acceleration and a positive velocity, that would mean that our object is speeding up. Okay, we would, we would see that that uh, acceleration is occurring in the positive direction, and we're traveling in the positive direction, so we're getting faster in the positive direction. We could also have acceleration and velocity, both being negative. Again, I forgot my up here, for, that would mean speeding up for both cases. Okay, as long as acceleration and velocity are both the same sign, that means we're speeding up. All this means, if they're both negative, is ju just that we're speeding up in a negative direction. So maybe to the left is negative, we're speeding up while we're going to the left. We could also have the situation where we have a positive acceleration and negative velocity, or maybe a negative acceleration and a positive velocity. This would mean we're slowing down, or maybe in our more common terms, decelerating. Okay, anytime velocity and acceleration are opposite in direction, that means that we're slowing down, right? So for example, uh, velocity being positive, so maybe we call it moving to the right positive, so I'm going this way in the positive direction, but my acceleration is in the opposite direction, negative, so it's kind of pulling back against us and we start to slow down as we move. The last thing I want to point out here uh, is units. So acceleration, and just unit-wise we have velocity, so meters per second divided by time, which you measure in seconds. So meters per second divided by seconds is meters per second squared. So our velocity, or I'm sorry, our acceleration should all be measured in meters per second squared. So now we want to work towards, kind of for the rest of this video, is developing uh, four what we call kinematic equations. Um, it's going to be a lot of math. Uh, you don't need to follow or write down every single step. Um, really what we're looking for is these four main equations that are going to be really useful equations for us for the rest of the year. Uh, what I want you to see as we look through these is just looking through these different equations uh, and, and seeing what's important, where did they come from, and that they really came from our definitions for displacement, velocity, acceleration, and just by manipulating those equations, we can come up with something else that's useful in different situations. So our first kinematic equation starts out with our definition for average velocity. Okay, we had average velocity equals our displacement over time. Our average velocity then was equal to our final position that I'm just going to call x, so wherever we're at at that particular moment in time, minus x naught, our original position, divided by time. And then I'm just going to rearrange this equation so that we solve for x. So if I do that, I'm going to multiply both sides by t. So v naught t equals x minus x naught. And then add x naught to both sides so that I get x equals x naught plus average velocity times time. So this would be useful in a situation, say we want to figure out how far have I gone if I know where I started and what my average velocity was and how long I've traveled for. Right? So it's, it can be a, a useful equation. So this equation is the first of our four kinematic equations. So that equation you should write down. Our second kinematic equation is going to come from uh, just kind of thinking about how average velocity works um, if I'm traveling at a constant acceleration. Okay, if I have a constant acceleration, this is my velocity, and this is time. Okay, and what's happening with velocity versus time is that if it's constantly accelerating, then I'm changing my velocity at the same rate. So I end up with the, a graph that would look something like that. Okay, so it's a, a constant slope there. And so to find our average velocity at any given point, we can actually do a sort of mathematical average where we add our initial velocity plus our final velocity and divide by time. And that gives us uh, another way of calculating average velocity. So if I know how fast I started, how fast I ended, and how long I accelerated for, I can find my average velocity during that trip. 
This is the second of our four kinematic equations. For our third kinematic equation, uh, we're going to take acceleration equal to delta V over T. So our definition for acceleration mathematically. Uh, and we're going to separate our delta V into V minus V naught. So our final velocity minus our initial velocity over time. And then we're just going to rearrange and solve for velocity. So I'm going to multiply both sides by T. So AT equals V minus V naught. And then add V naught to both sides so that I get V equals V naught plus AT. And that is our third kinematic equation. So this kinematic equation will be useful to figure out how fast was I go am I going after I've accelerated for a period of time. Right, so I start at some speed, I accelerate for a period of time, how fast am I going now? Uh, and that, that would be where this equation is useful. Our fourth and final kinematic equation gets a, a little bit trickier. Uh, we're going to start out with the equation we just ended with, so V equals V naught plus AT. And then we're going to kind of do some things that seem uh, a little strange to do. They aren't things that, that I'd ever expect you to know how to do or anything like that. Um, but what we're doing is by kind of doing random things to the equation, going to make an equation uh, that ends up being useful to us. So you kind of have to wait for the, the end product to really see the use here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add V naught and then divide by 2 on both sides of this equation. Okay, I can legally do that because I'm doing it to both sides of the equation, so it works with our algebra. So V plus V naught and then divide by 2 equals v naught plus v naught over 2 plus at over 2. Okay, So I added a v naught and divided by 2, added v naught and then divided both terms by 2. So divided this whole side of the equation by 2. And now I'm going to kind of simplify here. So v naught plus v naught over 2. So this term right here would give me 2 v naught over 2 which is just v naught plus another way I can write by, divide by 2 is just to multiply by 1 half, so 1 half at. And you'll notice this here should look familiar. That's actually our equation for average velocity. Okay, so we have average velocity equals v naught plus 1 half at, but we're not going to stop there because uh, we can make this better. So we have to remember that our average velocity was equal to x minus x naught over t equal to v naught plus one half a t. So now we're getting somewhere. Uh, so what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by t. So multiply the t over here and then add my x naught over there so that I'm just solving for my final position x. And when I do that, I get x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. And that equation right there is our fourth and final kinematic equation. Okay. Something uh, that is a, a very useful equation. It seems kind of complicated because it's a quadratic. right? We have the squared and then the single variable and no variable there, so it's uh, basically a quadratic equation. Uh, but you'll find that this is a very useful equation. So one last useful equation that we want to look at uh, is by taking our equation v equals v naught plus at and solving for time. So time equals v minus v naught over a. And then we had our equation x equals x naught plus v average times t. So now we're going to make two kind of messy substitutions here. First I'm going to take this and plug it in for t and I'm also going to plug in uh, my information from v naught. So what we end up with is x equals x naught plus my average velocity. So we get v naught plus v over 2 times t. Well, we're going to substitute in that for t. So v minus v naught over a. And so now we just kind of have some messy math to do here to, to sort of rearrange things. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by uh, 2a after I've subtracted the x naught. So I end up with something like this, 2a 
times x minus x naught equals v naught plus v over v minus v naught. And if we remember some of our rules for foiling things out here, we get 2a x minus x naught equals v naught squared minus v squared. And we're going to rearrange this so that we have v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a x minus x naught. And this is also one of our important kinematic equations. So we came up with a couple equations. Um, you'll find that uh, the last three equations actually are probably the most useful to us, uh, especially as we go on from here. Um, don't worry about how to use these equations right now. That's something we'll work on later. What's important is that you have these equations written down uh, and that we can work on them from here.